talk about that shortly because we're going to do the news. I think I think we'll jump into the news. So I've got a decent amount here. Um, a lot of it backloaded just because of um, the Ukraine Russia stuff. Um, we won't go too heavy in it again. Really, it's just covering what's sort of happening. Um, not the war, <laughs> but the events that have impacted in video games. But let's do some news. You ready, chat? Let's do it. It's time for some gaming news. If I find the button. This week in gaming news of the week, the 12th of March, 2022. Um, we have a decent amount to cover. Um, well, kind of. So the state of play did happen um, and it was some good stuff in there. However, it is one of those things where I... Uh, not sure. It was, it's a funny thing because it was definitely a Japanese one. Um, I don't think it had any like really heavy, heavy hitters. Um, and that's probably why it was only a 20 minute one. It wasn't too long and it wasn't really promoted too, too much. Um, but there were some definitely interesting things in there. I think, I think that are worth talking about. Um, I won't watch the full state of play, um, but we'll probably watch a couple of trailers from it. Hey, Red Rover. Welcome to NC. You got a gift today. Oh, that's cool. Hope it's very good. All right. Let's jump in to the news. So first up, this is kind of a weird one. Um, you're doing the news in the armor? Yes. Look, I've got to stay in this tin can. I've got to stay on brand. We're now, we're now permanently a warrior. Grand Blue Fantasy and Final Fantasy XI crossover event announced. So I don't know what's up with FF11. That game has is just like the eternal. It, for some reason, will never end. Um, it's very old, very jank, very lot of content, but old FF and, uh, FF and 11 and just old school MMO fans just will not let this game go. And Grand Blue Fantasy is not where I thought we'd see a crossover for. Cause so Grand Blue, if you don't know, Grand Blue, um, uh, teams, is made up from old Final Fantasy team. Was originally. I don't know if it's still the case. Um, when it first was created, there was very much a lot of Final Fantasy DNA in there, and they were very much inspired. They made very much a Final Fantasy inspired style world and gameplay and everything like that. So it was. It's always been a weird thing where it's. It feels like these two companies shouldn't really interact with each other. But some 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 breakthroughs happen, and now they are, and that's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if it's. I assume it's Final Fantasy XI in Grand Blue, um, and I'm assuming it's Toto Totoro. What's her name? Tataru? No, not Tataru. Uh, what's her name? The crazy mage lady. Um, I think that it'll probably be her. Um, I don't really know what else, but um, it's yeah. It's a weird one. I was not expecting this. Shantoto. Thank you, Red Rover. Shantoto. I would imagine it's probably some, It's just a Shantoto plotline because her thing is she's the dimension hopper and stuff. My only exposure to Grand Blue Fantasy is not gameplay. The gameplay is all right. It's enjoyable. I think it's a good gacha. I think there's better gachas now. Um, I still think that it's a solid one to play. There is a shit, absolute shit to a ton of content to do, though. Um, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I I kind of... I don't know if I would ever go back to Granblue, but um, I would, I'm would. i very, very excited for that action game because the world's very quite, is, is quite cool. The story is quite good. Um, it goes to insane god levels of battles in the end. Um, yeah, but just was not expecting this one, that's for sure. My only knowledge of FF11 comes from the original Dissidia. Yeah, I see. I kind of am similar in uh, Red Rover. I didn't really play too much of it. It wasn't 
like I didn't really have any interest in playing. It didn't look nice. It didn't look like it played nice. It was when I was back when I was playing WoW, so um, I didn't have time for a, another major MMO. But yeah, Imakuni Nakamura establishes a new game studio, Unseen. She has finally settled down. After her world tour of visiting so many game studios and uh, leaving her, her, her current studio and getting a lot of limelight on her, she's finally cashed in her chips and decided to make a game studio, which is kind of predictable in a sense. But um, yeah, so she is very notable for like doing... She is the artist and the director toward, who uh, contributed towards Akami, Bayonetta, Evil Within, and her last project, which was Ghostwire Tokyo, which Ghostwire is about to come out. Um, she didn't stay for the full development of it, but uh, yeah, she's. it's kind of crazy that she's just been um, bringing in... She's been going around just visiting all these people, getting support from people, uh, understanding, and I think now she's like comfortable with establishing a business now uh, i'm not sure how many of these i names i recognize just at a glance um i think one nabe actually i might recognize but um yeah hopefully this goes well for her as a studio i think she's seems pretty fucking switched on and i would imagine she's probably made some correct choices here but uh excited to see where this goes Yu-Gi-Oh! master duel has surpassed 20 million downloads. Yeah, I, again, I don't know how many of these are essentially um, a people making multiple accounts, um, but they did also give us uh, another thousand uh, free gem. I think actually two thousand um, for for the current event. Um, now it's a funny thing. I really, really, really hope they keep up the content release. Because right now, just adding just more solo that is very lightweight is not really cutting it. I want a new event. Um, it's it's one of those things that I hopefully Konami like their team is given the support that they can keep up because light, limelight is on Yu-Gi-Oh. This never happens. Pretty fucking cool, and I'm excited for it. But uh, they could they might not be able to keep up with the amount of pacing that's come for uh, all these people coming into it. But very good game. I still enjoy it. I still play it uh, regularly. Um, but yeah, please make things cheaper or give us more ways to get currency. <laughs> that's that's my my want. Nintendo. Uh, wait, did I? I feel like I. That is fine. Um, Super Nintendo World to open Universal Studios in Hollywood in twenty twenty three. So there will be. Essentially, the Osaka theme park, which I have not yet to go and gone because it's uh, I it established after I I'd been to Japan, um, but it's very cool looking. It's very manufactured. I think people like it. I think it will probably be a mainstay at Universal, which is a pretty rare thing to say because if you guys don't know, they kind of like they bring in areas, they remove areas, bring in areas, remove areas as the, for not just because of popularity, just to keep the cycle up. But it seems like Nintendo world is going to be like the main States. It will always be in essentially the, um, uh, it will be pretty much in the student, like the entire park for a very long time. And it was successful enough that they think they should bring it over to the West. And I think that makes sense. That it'll make a lot of money at, um, you know, Saka. Uh, sorry, in California. Um, because that's a very busy Universal Studios. I will say that. It's, it's, I'm trying to remember the difference between the two because they kind of blur together. But I think the one in, um, California was a little bit bigger and separated. So I think it might be a better for them. Car games are primordial gatches. Not surprised it's successful. I know, I know. Indomitable, uh, informidable. It's like, I'm very, I'm very, very happy that Yu-Gi-Oh's game's doing well. I just hope they support it. Oh, hopefully the shine is off Star Wars land by then. Stiff competition. I completely forgot about Star Wars land. Um, yeah. 
I, I don't know. I think it's the thing of like, it's the type of thing where those IPs that you've just mentioned are both very, uh, I guess, they will always sell. They make money. There's a reason why Disney picked up Star Wars and it's still doing well despite them over, like, the oversaturation of it. Nintendo, like, I literally had to cut uh, four or five Pokemon uh, merch things I saw I uh, that were actually interesting. Some Nintendo merch that I saw. Just because those things sell. Like, that people will always put money in them. So it, it, it's a wise one to bring this over, essentially. Um, but yeah. You guys can look forward to that. It's still quite a while away. Um, but if you live in that region, it might be worth a visit. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands details season pass. So we're not too surprised about a season pass for this game. Um, but uh, it looks actually... This game is looking pretty fun. Um, I might pick it up at some point. Um, I do like me some Borderlands. It's been a while since I've played it. But... Uh, this far of your own free will. Let's check out this trailer. Uh, actually, let's up the resolution because it's currently in poopy resolution. A little farther won't hurt. What's up with the chip tune music? It's not the music I was expecting for this. The, vi and the environments actually look really good. So this game isn't out yet. It's coming out soon. But, um... It's just... It just looks fun. Uh, DMCA? I don't think so. Is this a... I don't think this is a real song, Superwoman. If not, then I'll find out in the future, but... I think this sounds like it's made for the game. Not the best trailer, but it, I mean, it kind of shows that look, you, you, uh, you're watching Borderlands at the end of the day. I don't know if I like the weird neon color thing throughout it. I feel like we're in that era now where everything is just... We've gone from uh, everything being brown and gray to uh, everything is neon or uh, lots of color. April 21st. 2022 so it, it's that's pretty soon after the release so it, you don't have to wait too long it seems for um uh you don't have to wait too long for the extra content so people will probably finish the main game by that point and then be thirsty for something so that that's good timing that pumpkin onion has moves it kind of do you know what's weird looking at this i'm getting it's borderlands but i'm feeling Fortnite in it, which is kind of weird to me now to say aloud, and it's kind of, uh, kind of worrisome in that regard, <laughs> but it's fine. Fight games. All right, we're well, so out of general news. It's time for fight news. This one is actually a decent, uh, a pretty cool piece of news that we can talk about. Evo 2022's lineup. Um, so I, again, I don't think it's still in person. I don't think we're doing in-person Evo just yet. Um, but it's, there's some good games in here. Um, so the lineup consists of DBZ Fighters, which just got a new character announced. Um, Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which I think also got a new character a little while back. Guilty Gear, which is relatively new and it's going to be getting new. It's probably will have an announcement around Evo. Um, KOF 15, which just dropped, which, uh, people are enjoying, it sounds like. Um, Melty Blood. Um, which dropped about last year. Uh, Mortal Kombat, decently old now. It's probably on the like the wayside until a new Mortal Kombat gets announced, which if rumors are true, there probably will be one very soon, I believe. Skullgirls second and, and this one's probably the big one. Skullgirls returning to the Evo lineup main stage. That's pretty fucking crazy. Second Encore is coming out, which has a whole heap of new characters coming with it. Um, and Skullgirls is extremely good. It's still one of the best feeling fighting games ever, um, but uh, it's got a very hardcore fan base. So it's interesting to see it make it back to the main stage. Um, 
Street Fighter V Championship Edition. It is the end of the like life cycle of champion uh, of Street Fighter V. Probably we'll get the uh, like more details. I think for uh, it over the year, but I don't know if we're going to get it right away because Street Fighter VI just got announced. And Tekken Seven. And Tekken Seven is probably going. It's like it's the staple. It, it, Street Fighter. Wet, Street Fighter and Tekken are the staples. Mortal Kombat also is. Um, but you'll notice there is two missing games from this lineup, and we talked about it last last week. Um, there's no Smash Brothers. Now, if you don't know, uh, Guilty Gear, uh, not Guilty Gear, Evo is now being uh, essentially purchased by Sony. So it's a sec essentially a Sony event. Um, and in the process of doing that, Nintendo has decided they no longer want to have uh, Smash Bros amongst their tournaments, which is a bit rough. Um, I would say Smash has always been, a, as much as I hate the community, that how they interact with the rest of Evo, because um, Smash people only give a shit about Smash. Um, it's one of those things where it's not the best that it's gone because it does take away some viewership and some money from it but uh nintendo nintendo controls their ip and it kind of just would it has to be like that unfortunately um so it does mean though that it does give a glance in for both skull girls and melty blood i think melty blood was going to end up in it anyway but um the i think it would have been a interesting thing because it's like it would have kicked out fighters would have kicked out Granblue. i think Granblue is probably the one that would have been dropped as much as this community around it it's quite small and skull girls is a very good wild card got new new melty blood is it worth picking up uh i'm a lapsed type moon law whore i don't know myself i've never played a melty blood i've played it i've played it here and there I've never owned a Melty Blood um, Informidable. I, from what I hear, people really enjoy this one. Um, they cleaned up a whole heap of stuff. It's a bit tighter. I mean, uh, I can't remember the name of the company that makes the Melty Blood. Um, it's not, it's not shortbread, French bread, is it? It's, it's that other one. Um, they, they do very good. They do very good gameplay, and people really enjoy it. If you like anime fighters, they're your go-to. So. Um, I imagine people are going to have some really whacked out combos uh, during that final, but um, I'm excited. I always like watching Evo. Um, I feel like I still like the in-person ones to watch online versus the pure online ones. But um, yeah, what's this Zigzagoon? This is a game announcement, hang on. All right, we'll, wa we'll watch this quickly before we jump into the events. What's this? Coromon? Wait, why are we watching the Coromon trailer? <laughs> I feel like we watched this a while back, actually. Or is this a new trailer? No, this is a new trailer. This is from January. <laughs> no problem, formidable. I like my anime fighters a lot, but I would say that I'm not like the type of person that plays each of them on release. It releases at the end of this month? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I feel like some people are very excited for this. Um, it looks very nice. The sprite art's quite nice. It's still, I probably, I probably won't play this unless I hear people very excited about it because a lot of these uh, Monster Raisin ones are a bit short-lived just because of their, their indie developers but yeah lego star wars and the, yeah I, I i i heard that as well i i can't believe that people still get the lego star wars games it's kind of crazy to me um that they still have like they're as successful as they are um considering that they there are a lot of just a lot of ips it's just a lot of ips but people really like that format um but yeah Paramount will be interesting to see if people really like it. All right, upcoming events. Final Fantasy 35th anniversary website has opened. So this one is interesting because um, we've had some little 
taps on the noses and uh, some rumors going around about things that might be at this. Um, and uh, Yoshinori Kitase made a very strange, like, like tease. I still am not 100% what he's referring to. He states, V is 30, V2 is 25, XI is 20. So five equals 30, which is five years ago. Uh, five released 30 years ago, which is still bonkers to me. Um, seven released 25 years ago. Nine released 20 years ago. Now, he, it's the anniversary of the 35th, which I'm not sure is that mean they're going to do a re-release of Final Fantasy 3 um, or 4. I really don't know, um, but a bit of a weird thing to tease, but uh, supposedly there may be footage of Final Fantasy 16, um, but yeah, uh, looking forward to seeing what they do. And uh, I think, uh, when is it? So the series will celebrate its 35th anniversary on December 18th. So it's still quite a while away. I, I didn't realize it was on uh, at the end of the year, but yeah. Big year for them. Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak broadcast to feature new monsters. Hell heckin' yeah. Um, I am very, very excited. Um, I, you're, I want to see more of the world. I actually don't want to see monsters. I want to see the environments, ironically, because we're already seeing quite a few monsters, but I would love to see some new environments and maybe a returner environment. Um, I, I fingers, fingers crossed. I, there's two environments I would love to see, um, updated into modern, um, Monster Hunter, but, uh, we'll have to see. Because we're going to a new part of the world, so um, unsure whether or not they would actually have us go back to some older zones. Which is more anticipated, Final Fantasy 16 or Final Fantasy 7 Remake Part 2? I would say general populace probably Final Fantasy 7. For me, I would say 16 because 16 is a action game, um, and if they fix up what, all the problems that they had in 15, because 15 was a bit of a bit of a cluster in terms of its combat um if they if they make it a tight action game which you know me i love that it looks way more like devil may cry or bayonetta right now um i would be very excited it would be harder for people to play it i think but um uh people people are a little bit more okay playing action games these days um and i have absolute infinite faith in yoshi p so um, I really, I'm, I'm very excited for 16, but I want them to take their time with it. I'd really, if they don't show anything for ages, I don't friggin' care because I, uh, I think that they need to take their time with it. They cannot ha let another 15 happen. Um, but seven remake part two, those two being made at the same time will be interesting to see how much DNA ends up crossing over between the two for asset creation and team uh, connectivity and engine building and things like that so it'll be cool to see i'm, I'm kind of curious new game plus expo 2022 set for march 31st so uh new game plus usually a collection of a lot of indie games and things like that um a lot of japanese titles um so we're gonna see uh it looks like we've already got a lineup of publishers they've got uh, uh, axis idea factory uh inti games natsume uh, NeoWiz, uh, Nis America, Nis America, um, Playism, PM Studio, Panda Rocker Games, and Sky Stone Games. So we got quite a few here. Um, some of these games, some of them, are, well, I'm wondering about Nis because they're in such a weird transition at the moment. Um, Axis and Idea Factory, we've got a few different things that we could see from them. Playism, we could see a few different things. Um, that's amazing, interesting. I'm wondering what they would he have here, um, but yeah. Could be some fun stuff. That's not too far away. That's March 31st. It's only two, three weeks away. Um, but yeah. Um, oh, by the way, with the Sunbreak event, I actually don't know if I stated. It's actually in three days time. Just FYI, people. So I probably won't be able to cover it due to work um, live. But I will hopefully be able to recap it 
um, in the coming days after. Um, Gamecom! Uh, 2022 will both be in online and in person. So uh, this makes sense. I think this is the better way to do it as we come out of uh, essentially COVID. I think if they separate the events into a physical portion and an online portion, so that way they can get announcements and things like that out there in a good sort of space and pacing and things like that. Um, I think that a lot of the in-person stuff where it's like certain devs, hands-on things, um, and like, of course, like cosplay and anyone doing the normal uh, sort of interactions, I think those things should be in person. Um, but curious how they are going to do it. But generally Gamescom has a handful of things. Like if you like European games, you probably will find some stuff in here. Usually like oh, it's generally at least two RTSs get announced at Gamescom. Um, there's usually something from like, say, Blizzard ends up over there. Um, there's usually a few uh, Western things that come over. Very rare for Japanese stuff to end there, but um, there will be hopefully a couple of things that we can be excited for. Any announcements? State of play did happen, so we will talk about the state of play in here. Um, this one kind of came out of fucking left field. So, well, not completely true. There was a... The people who made Glover did put up a little article or a little... They put up somewhere. I can't remember where I read it. Maybe it was Twitter. And they were asking about, like, what would they like to see Glover, like, be ported? Like, what could we do? Should we try and do something with it? And people were like, Glover? You crazy? Of course we want Glover. And then this happened. Which is very, very strange. So if you don't know, Glover was a very... So it's kind of a cult classic game from the N64. It's quite hard. I'm not joking. This game controls very strange. Um, and it's uh, essentially a, uh, whoops. Um, essentially a platformer where your uh, glove and you have a ball, and you can magically change the ball into different properties, whether it be a bouncy ball, or a hard gem, or things like that. And it, it's it's a tough game. Um, Speedruns are very short of it, because they can just skip everything because of the weird physics. But it's a physics game on the N64. And uh, I like it. I have a fondness for it. I never completed this, though. This game was that hard. But um, I guess we can watch a trailer. Oh, I forgot about this music. The music is actually quite choice in this game. It's kind of got like, so it's a, I'm fairly sure it's a British game. It has kind of like this sort of quirky vibe to it, like, um, and strangely unsettling at times. Um, but yes, you are a glove, you have a ball. I feel like if you, uh, also, the puzzle is lots of puzzles, and they're kind of obtuse at times. Um, but yeah. I like they're changing the ball against the wall for some reason. But yeah, you can, you can see you can change the ball into different properties, and it changes how it works and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's just a very strange game. And being a physics game in that era, very, 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 very... Uh, I guess it doesn't always work the way you want it to, but um, essentially it's it's been announced. It ha so we don't think we have a release date for it. I said it just it just said coming soon, but it looks like they're trying to do it. You could see some stuff where, where there was poor issues there um, with some of the texture work and stuff like that. But who knows? Who knows where that will go? F Zero X comes to Nintendo Switch Online this week, so we actually are getting a new game for the Switch uh, and. I really like F-Zero X, which means that we get to play F-Zero X online. The best part about a lot of these uh, N64 ports is getting to play these games online without having to emulate it. And I know the Nintendo Switch Online netcode is not very good, but it doesn't mean that it's a bit more accessible because I've I really enjoyed playing Star Fox online with people. I didn't think I'd be able to ever do that. Um, I 
think that there's going if they announce Diddy Kong Racing and I get to play that in multiplayer I will be over the moon I love that game to death but um, it's very much kind of a single player experience the funny thing is you still have the, the split up screen so you can still screen cheat on all of these games they haven't removed that capability it's all screen cheatable um, but yeah that's a cool one alright let's jump into the state of play um, so Sony did their state of play, but it was a Japanese focus one. There was one non-Japanese game in here, um, but we've got a series of trailers here. Um, so Ghostwire did a new trailer. Um, I am looking forward to this game. And uh, it looks kind of crazy. This has my tone. Usually this is stuff that you only see reserved in anime games. But this is a modern fantasy, dark fantasy uh, game. Magical powers, crazy sci-fi shit happening. Um, there's just like ghosts and spectrals and it's, everyone's like cursed and stuff. And it genuinely looks really good. It seems to have like a lot of references to Japanese mythos. So if you like Japanese like ghost stories or monster stories you probably will dig this um i've heard some good stuff about it so far i kind of want to hear more if people really enjoy the gameplay like but the story seems wacky enough that i think that um it, this will be uh, this will be a fun romp um visually it's also very very good looking now it is meant to be a horror, so I don't know to what degree. Currently looking at stuff, it's not too scary looking, but um, supposedly there is meant to be like some pretty harrowing things at times in it, but I don't know how that'll be considering how flashy and bright and everything it is, especially all the powers you used. I don't think it, I think it will be difficult to be able to be like treated as a real horror horror, but it looks fun. It genuinely looks fun though. So, all right, I get to talk about this one. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R announced. Now, for those who are JoJo fans, I saw a lot of people get very, 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 very excited. I really want people to temper their expectations with this. I love me a JoJo, big JoJo fan. I played the absolute living shit out of this originally and uh, Eyes of Heaven. Now, this is a fighting game. I want people to be warned, this is a fighting game. And it is a pure fighting game. It is a 2D fighter, and it did not play very well. It had a lot of issues. Balance was not great, um, and the online was absolute dog shit. But there is a lot, a lot, a lot of fan service. If you, I, honestly, I still think Eyes of Heaven is probably better for general JoJo people. But if you can play a fighting game and you can deal with some jank, this is a good experience. This is fun. Because the amount of references in this are absurd. Um, it looks like it's been slightly up because it was a PS3 game, by the way. So it skipped two generations. Um, don't know why it took them so long to do this, I guess. I guess because JoJo is popular again. Um, but it's... What's interesting about this is um, they're actually adding more content. Supposedly, they're going to fix up some of the combat systems somehow, which I don't know if that's possible. Um, and they are revamping the entire uh, single-player story experience. Is there... St yes, there is. It wasn't very good. When I play... When I, from memory, it wasn't a very good experience playing the single-player of this. Um... It was kind of just very standard arcade style story for a fighting game. Um, I don't think it really was great. Um, but seemingly they're wanting to improve this. Um, the, the, it doesn't really have it in the trailer, but they're wanting to improve the shit out of it. So if they can fix the combat, if they can figure, figure out how to fix the sluggishness of the movement, which supposedly they're adding an air dash, which that's pretty fucking big. If you can jump air dash, that suggests that they're probably adding a proper dash, um, which that if they can add more speed to the movement, 
that really would alleviate a lot of problems. Um, I do wonder whether or not they'd fix all of the combo stuff, but yeah. So I wonder whether or not they'll end, they'll actually have like final fights from Gappy's um, uh, storyline. Because Josuke is like, his story is completed. We've seen the end of Jojo Lion now. So we know who the villain is. We know what they can, like we can have other stands and stuff. There was in the original version, I fear, fairly sure there was only Gappy and uh, his, the, the brother, not his brother, a, the brother. Um, I think there were only two characters in it or that was in All Star in Eyes of Heaven. I can't remember. But Johnny, God, Johnny, Johnny plays weird. You want to talk about a weird game in a fighting game? This might be one of the strangest characters in a fighting game ever. Johnny plays so strangely. Um, him and Gyro. Gyro is very, very good though. Gyro might be one of the strongest characters in that game. Is it likely to uh, ape the manga or is it a unique story? Oh yeah, it follows this. It follows the, um, the manga. Um, so, that's the good thing about this game. Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle did follow the manga. Eyes of Heaven was a unique story. It basically centered around Dio coming back in a weird alternate reality form and ascending beyond God. So you would have all that. Literally, they just, they dimension hopped between all these characters. Um, so, yeah. But very, that Eyes of Heaven, very fun game. This little bit of a clunky game, but I enjoyed it. Um, so hopefully they fix a lot of the problems about it because otherwise people are going to be a little sad on that title, I feel like. Dio Field Chronicle is a new IP, um, not an existing one. People seem to thought this was a return. Um, it's a new IP that is coming to uh, most of the modern consoles. Um, it Visually, it looks really good. It gave me um, Fire Emblem vibes with uh, like tactics and it looks like it's an RTS. So. Square Enix is getting very, 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 very good at their trailers and making 2D assets. Them working in the uh, handheld space has made them make some amazing 2D visuals. I think they're currently very, very king at the moment for that. Um, I'm really enjoying how, how that looked. Though this in-game gives me Babylon's Fall vibes, weirdly enough, which is published by Square, it's not made by Square, but um, it's a very interesting art style for um, how a lot of the lighting and stuff is done. So yeah, it looks kind of like a, a turn-based, or it might even be an RTS, it's hard to tell. Um, and they're little dioramas, as you can see from that, so um, they're just little, little battlefields. Um, if you, if you like medieval fantasy and want to have a bit of warfare, it might be for you. This game might be for you. I, I do wonder, like, if it has got Fire Emblems, like, uh, or XCOM's style of permadeath for characters. But considering there's a lot of cutscenes that seem to have static characters, it feels like possibly not. It's hard to say. But Dio, the Dio Field Chronicle. Looks nice. Square Enix pulled a couple out here and um, it kind of makes sense because they're working on a lot of things right now. A lot of stuff. They now, uh, so Square Enix also announced Valkyrie Elysium. So it's from the Valkyrie Chronicle series. Um, Dio, Dio Field is not a Valkyrie game. This is the Valkyrie game. Um, and I don't know if this looks great visually. Um, I, I've not played the Valkyria Chronicles games, but this game looks like a PS3 game. I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening. I know it'll probably be a lower badger game amongst Square, but this particular one does look a little rough. 
her face is very wide. I've seen her on a couple of promotional things and she's it just she just looks very wide faced. It's it kinda has a stiffness to it too. We're in by the way, chat, normally I'd be very excited by this because this is the age of the action RPG. Everything is a fucking action RPG. I just get to play fun action games. However, this you get struggling here. Hang on, this one was this one was a lot louder. Um, it's one of those things where this I love action action RPGs, but if it's stiff, it can be a bit of a rough game to pick up. And this kind of you want to talk about weird? It reminds me a lot of Dragon Guard Three. Looking at it. Um, Oh, the main menu music. Oh, shit. I didn't even realize it was on. Sorry. I can't hear it. I need to fix that bug. I literally don't know when it's playing. The BGM. Ugh. Yeah, it, I need to I need to figure out a way to fix that because I, I literally can't hear that music um, on my end. Thank you for letting me know, though. I might, maybe I might turn down the BGM as well so it's just not as loud these days. But yeah, Valkyrie Elysium. So we're getting a new Val uh, Valkyrie Chronicles game, but it's an Elysium game. And then they give us a little tease of a female cane. So I don't know if they're going to have a series of Final Fantasy characters in there, but there is a, uh, a female version of Kane in this game, which cool. I'm guessing they might have classes maybe. Exo Primal is a 5v5 multiplayer game. So if you guys did not see uh, this, there was a rumor going around for uh, Dino Crisis being remastered and people were like, oh, Dino Crisis remaster? Dino Crisis remaster? And then this dropped. Hello, viewers. I am Ivy the Android. I'd like to share today's dinosaur forecast. <laughs> this is dumb fun. This is a bit of dumb fun, and it might be pretty good. It visually looks fucking incredible. Capcom are in a weird space right now of being some of the best looking video games. Capcom are doing it to the mad work. Ever had Reign of Dinosaurs? Sure are to now. I love how they just fall. Surely they would die from just falling in, but uh, they fell from like a 20 story building. But uh, yeah, wasn't Dino Crisis. We have our game Exo Primal, which has the Dino Crisis cast in it. Um, so if you liked Dino Crisis, this may be for you. It visually looks fun. But it is a 5v5 game, so I don't know if I'm necessarily on board for that. But damn, this game looks good. This game looks visually very good. Also, I get to fight dinosaurs with a sword. That's pretty good for me. So I don't know... Because I never played the original Dino Crisis. I don't know if it was like this, where it's kind of... it's This game's like EDF. It's like Earth Defense Force, but with dinosaurs. And actually looks nice. So I don't really know if... I don't really know necessarily if I'm the target demographic, but I think friends of mine will be. So I probably will end up playing it. Dino Crisis Dota or Overwatch? I, I don't know. I, I'm really unsure because they say it's 5v5, but I think it might be PvP VE. So, I think that it's, um, I don't know what that little tease is at the end. I'm assuming if you know Dino Crisis, you would get it. But, um, I don't really know because it says team based. I think that perhaps you fight the dinosaurs while trying to get objectives while another team are trying to get objectives and maybe um really unsure um i probably we'd probably need to hear more about it but um yeah 
interesting. It's it's a very it's an interesting game at least, and I think it's it got people's attention, which is pretty crazy to say considering um it's a Dino Crosis like game. So hang on. So what what they've got here? So supposedly, uh, however, the game was focused on Dino Survival mode uh, with task of team people working together to accomplish their goals before a rival team. So I was right. So it's the it's PvP VE while all dealing with dinosaurs. Each person will pick an exosuit class. Um, there'll be more details at later stage. Um, yeah, so it sounds like it's just you're trying to do stuff while avoiding the dinosaurs, I guess, which I don't know how that necessarily works, but we'll see if people are into it. Death Stranding, sorry, I don't know why I said that. Stranger in Paradise is uh, getting a third demo, which I'm looking forward to playing. And we got one more trailer from them. Um, I, I, don't, I feel like I don't need to see any more trailers about this game, but holy shit, I'm very excited. Um, the previous two demos, very good. I'm a big Neo fan. I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. The only thing still is I am not a fan of, of Jack or the cast. They're kind of bland and edgy in a way that I know is deliberately silly but I don't know whether or not it's going to be um, any good. It's really hard to say. That demo is generating a, a lot of hype. I'm glad to hear because, again, Neo did not like sell as much as I feel like it should have. A lot of people really liked it, but a lot of people just dis disliked it for some reason, and I have no idea why. Would you expect something more like the failed Resi multiplayer games? Yeah, I'm actually surprised uh, in Formidable that they, they didn't go that way, but probably they realized it, wasn't a, it was a good reason not to do that for that Dino Crisis game. Forspoken World Collide trailer. I still don't care about Forspoken. This, the game still looks better. The more and more I see of it, it actually looks like a fun game. Visually, it's very pretty, but it there's something... I don't know about you guys. It looks open and bland in a way that I don't appreciate. Um, I mean, you've got, you're throwing a dragon fight against me, and that seems pretty cool. Oh, I, okay, I have to mute this one. I, that's right, they put really bad music over the top of this. Um, I know the question is, went out after the first demo. I hope they are iterating. Probably are. The Neo team have, like, I mean, as much as there's stuff that stayed the same between Neo 1 and Neo 2, they definitely put in a lot of content that we cared about. The problem was the fact that they still had the issues for the end game. I think Neo, weirdly enough's problem lies in its end game. Um, but for this game, I don't know whether or not they'll, they'll go down that route. I don't know if they literally will have that sort of end game loop that we had. Um, I assume they probably will, but hard to say because square will probably have the final say on that. But yeah, like I said, this game looks very nice. Visually it looks really good, but it kind of looks really open and it's just an open world game with fights randomly in it it still looks like a tech demo for the ps5 it really feels like it it, it do you know what it is for if you if people know about the new systems that have been incorporated into the epic engine um it looks like the new epic engine to me um but i don't know if it is because it might be straight up just uh it might be Square's in-house engine. If so, it's just showing off the power of next gen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really, I'm really not sold on this game. I people probably will enjoy this, but I feel like I'm I'm sensing perhaps we're getting another. Um, uh, what's the one, what's the game with Alloy in it? Um, the redhead girl. Um, I feel like I'm getting another one of those moments where I don't. I I know people really like it, but it's not for me. Gundam Evolution. We're getting more. Uh, we're getting a announcement trailer for another Gundam game, which is kind of weird. Hey, Indominus. Welcome on in. I'm again not a Gundam fan, but if you are a Gundam fan, this probably looks pretty dope. Um, it actually is a proper game. It's kind of weird to have this see it this late into the PS5 cycle. I think that game was intended to come out a lot earlier. I'll be honest. I I don't really know. Square's been funny with their Western divisions, and I sense something may have gone wrong with it. Horizon? Yeah, Horizon. Sorry. I, I literally couldn't think of the name of the game for a moment. 
But yes, this looks fun. I mean, it's just it's a team-based shooter with uh, Gundams, and if you like those Overwatchy style games or Halo, it's probably closer to Halo. I'll be honest. Um, and you want to run around in silly mech suits that look like toys? Um, this probably is for you. Gundam, I Gundam is a funny thing to me. People get very, very excited for Gundam. To get a real Gundam game, though, is pretty intense. Most often than not, they're just, they're very gatchery, sort of like, just sort of silly selling product style games, but this looks like a real game. Um, and I imagine there's some stuff in that trailer where people are like, oh my God, they've got those Gundams. That's crazy. Oh, it's this Gundam fighting this Gundam. But... I don't know. I really don't know. Gigabash Rora trailer. So Gigabash got another trailer. Um, I generally think this looks fun. I don't know if I will play it, um, but it looks fun. Um, it's a kaiju game. It's a sort of party game. It kind of has the old school... Uh, what's, what was that monster game that... Uh, I also really like that move. That's very cool. Um, that I can't remember the, the monster bash. I think it's called, but um, it that still looks fun. I think that there will be people that will pick that up. I think it's just a lightweight, fun indie game. Oh, I forgot about this one. I don't. I guess this is considered Japanese. Konami announces Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: The Cowbunga Collection. Again, Konami just finding ways to squeeze money out of the industry, but uh, re-releasing a whole heap of old games and some ones that were not released outside of some areas, some that were only on arcades machines, some of them on, like, the Game Boy, weirdly enough. But if you really like the Ninja Turtles uh, old school games, there's some, there are really good uh, Turtles games. Um, a lot of the arcade ones, I think, were quite good. But, um... Oh, I forgot about... Oh, I forgot Tournament Fighters existed. Shit. Um, so you may want to pick up this if you have just wanted just a collection of these old games. But I feel like this is very... These are for a specific, uh, specific set of people. The Turtles fans. I completely forgot about Tournament Fighters being a thing. Some of these games also are very tough, especially the old NES and NES ones. Yeah, we are still in that nostalgia. We, I think, I think the nostalgia train started, and we're never escaping it. I feel like nostalgia is this is where we live now. Uh, Trek to, Ky uh, to Yomi got another trailer. Again, this game looks very nice. Um, if you haven't seen this, it is a stylized version similar to Ghost of Tsushima. However, it's purely black and white. It's a side-scrolling uh, action game. And it's completely, completely captures the tone of old Japanese samurai movies because it is made by Japanese devs. And it's got some notable people in this. This trailer actually reveals quite a, a few sort of notable uh, voices in it. Um, and some weird ones as well. Um, but it's, it looks interesting. Again, it kind of, there's parts of it that to me doesn't look necessarily like Japanese mythos, but I think you get what they're going for. Again, it, it very much seems like it is accepting Japanese mythos. It doesn't look like it's like Ghost of Shima that like, kind of danced around stuff. I think spirits are real in this game, but um, yeah. I hope this game's good because it's people have talked it up. Um, Akio's in it, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, 
Uh, hopefully it's good. It's been talked up quite a lot. Quite a, quite a lot. Digital development really do support their devs in terms of publications and stuff. Returnal version 3. This is probably the one that I would say is not Japanese in any way. Um, Returnal is getting an expansion. Um, I don't really care about Returnal. Um, I don't know if there's people in chat that do, but uh, this game apparently was, people really enjoyed it. And this is adding a very big thing about it, which is they're adding co-op, which um, it as a roguelike um, shooter game, that's pretty cool. As a person who's a big fan of um, uh, the modern step for roguelikes, um, particularly, um, oh no, I'm having a mental break on that game. Uh, Risk of Rain 2. Risk of Rain 2 uh, was very, very, very fun. So I imagine them adding co-op to a game like this would be very, very good if they do it in the right way. And I, honestly, Risk of Rain 2 and this have a lot of a lot in common. Turtles and rep uh, reptiles bring back nostalgia things like reviving more, reviving me. Oh my god! Indominus, I, I got halfway through that and that and to realize what you were going to do there. Fossil Fighters remake? Hmm. I just want a release date for Splatoon 3. You might be waiting a little while, Superwoman. Nintendo Nintendo and I aren't always the clearest on things. My release is within this tower. And I will find it. But yeah. Definitely not a game for me, but. I do know people got way, in, way, way into that. All right, that was the state of play. Um, so moving on from state of play, we still actually have a f two more announcements uh, that were dropped this week. Overwatch 2 is getting a closed beta test for PvP. Holy crap, it's been so long. This means this game may be ending its development cycle. This game has gone through some real development hell if you're unaware. Um, it's pretty fucking terrible. Um, gosh, they're really, really, really struggling with it. But um, yeah, uh, we've lost a lot of key staff members that were on it as well. Um, but yeah, if you're excited for Overwatch 2, you'll finally maybe able to play it. Um, it's closed beta now. Sign up if you want. Public beta will probably be not too long after that, I imagine. And then we'll probably start getting some announcement dates, I imagine. But uh, yeah, I feel like perhaps uh, this this stone might have gone way cold, but um, they're going to still try and sell this game. So I was not a fan of Overwatch 1. I had a lot, a lot of issues with it, um, but it took off like a crazy, crazy amount. The modern stage for versus shooters now has changed quite a lot since Overwatch 1 came out. So... It will be interesting to see if they can compete, but uh, people people just really like this universe, so it might do well. Another rumored title has come out, or it has been announced. Dead Space is getting a remake, um, and it will be launching early 2023. Um, now, Dead Space is a cult classic. People love this. This is a horror game that people absolutely loved so much that we ended up getting three of them and the third one not being so great but one and two people really really wanted a remake for both of them um i still think this might be a little too soon to make remakes for games like this but i imagine this will sell pretty fucking well um yeah pretty good and now we can talk about some controversies all right so this is really one main one I'll talk about. I won't talk about Activision Blizzard. I won't talk about... There was a Sony thing as well, but I kind of... I want to maybe hold off from that, talking about that one a, l a little bit longer. Um, but the, I'll talk about the one that was the hot topic for this week um, or this month. Artesian Builds. If you didn't see this, um, I actually had talked to a couple of streamers about this because I actually know a few people that were sponsored by them. Artesian Builds were essentially a computer development uh, or PC building firm that essentially would take sponsorships for streamers where they would promote them and then if they deemed that they had done successful enough 
on their uh, promotion of them as a brand, they would build them a PC and ship it out. And they'd ship it out to like even places to Australia and stuff like that. But there was a notorious Twitch event that happened where they went on, on stream and there was a person asking about why they were not interacting with them or why they were not like qualifying and things like that. And so kind of some poor, poor PR happening particularly from the CEO and uh, not, yeah, it was not, not great. Really bad, really, really, really bad PR went down. They then made it worse from some of their announcements and apologies and stuff. And uh, communities really banded behind um, the woman that actually started the chain of events, this Kia Pia. I saw her on Twitter and stuff like that. And um, yeah. This company kind of has just been slapped about now. I don't know if there's any sort of legal repercussions that might happen about it, but essentially they brought to light this, this essentially artisan builds and a few other PC uh, sort of build companies doing a similar sort of thing, um, being a bit dodgy. And uh, again, please be careful with sponsorships. You, you know, I have not done a single sponsorship on my streams. I am still not at a point that I think that it would be appropriate to do sponsorships for you guys. But what I would say is that there are a lot of ones I've been contacted about that I do not did not feel comfortable about saying yes to in any regards. And um, ones like this, I would say, it fit into that category. They seem like predatory sponsorship models, essentially, because they fact they look at the way it works in a lot of these is they look at people's um, like they go for the cheap end where it's essentially they'll reach out to people for free. They'll offer something they will never give you um, because you need to reach certain milestones. You'll never reach those milestones um, because you're too small, but you're still doing um, promotion for them. So they're getting that out there. And then it's like you have, then it has starts a chain reaction of, oh, perhaps I can get sponsorships as well. So other smaller ones go into it and it's, it's not great. I don't, it there's quite a few of these that i've seen and it's you really do have to be careful around them whether it's they really they're, it's a business but they're definitely not really intending to give you anything anyway it's definitely not that the 18 plus side of the internet really likes overwatch characters we'll see uh, indominus we'll see about that perhaps people will get really into the new character designs and then we'll have a resurgence for uh, for overwatch but yes, I, I, this is just one I think I'll bring up just because it's in relation to people I know and to Twitch. Just be aware that if you are doing a Twitch stream or there are people sponsorships or you watch someone stream with sponsorships, that um, perhaps it's, it can be, it might not be the best for them. Um, but who knows? I might go down the road and I might find someone I might be comfortable with one day. <laughs> the rewards for referrals is very, uh, yes, MLM-esque. Yep. I agree. Big business. All right. Let's move casually into business. This one I was pretty happy to hear. Capcom will make John Takayuchi and Ryozo Sujimoto executives. If I would ever say two people in Capcom that were more deserving, these two have put in some mad work. They've really taken Capcom to the next level. In the past... I want to say five to 10 years, these two have really made a landmark on the industry from their very good choices. And Capcom giving them this promotion is very nice to see. And uh, new Capcom looking pretty bright. There was a point where we were, uh, they were called Crapcom. People were really, really like not happy with the games that were being put out. People, just certain brands getting dragged through the waste. Like it was, it was a bit sad as a Capcom fan for a bit there, but we're now in an era where, like, I would say Monster Hunter started the train. Ryozo made some amazing decisions, um, and I am very, very happy where we are with Monster Hunter. Um, I know I'm not the biggest on Rise, but we, I know what's in the works, so it's like I'm happy. Um, and Resident Evil coming back properly and you look at seven you look at eight you look at the remakes people are very happy modern capcom is doing very well and i feel like that these two were very very much a part of that uh big push so very happy 
Um, hopefully their teams continue to get the supports they deserve and um, uh, hopefully they don't get pulled away from their projects too, too much. But the people working under both of these individuals, also I have a lot of confidence in as well. So it's just good. My first sponsor, the Ridge Wallet. Oh my God. I don't know. I really don't know what I would want to be sponsored for, honestly. I think hardware is not a bad one. I do like the idea of certain hardware sponsorships. I think things that I would use, again, it's either games or things I'd use or things, maybe even food sponsors. I like a good food. Active, oh, okay, all right, hang on. I just need to double check chat. We might be in the, uh, I think we are. All right, cool. Big business this week is very much a continue of last week's where we're going to talk about essentially the Russian market. Video games in Russia. So, between donations and cutoffs is what we're going to talk about here. So, first up, um, Activision Blizzard. They're cutting off Russia from their market. It's not selling games. They're not taking money from them. They're not. They're just. They're not involved. So that's that's a very very big one. Um, again, everyone is going. This is the thi this is the thing to do, and is the right thing to do. Epic Games ceases commerce with Russia, but com keeps communication open. So Epic Games also closing down, which may cause issue for games being developed in Russia, um, which I, again, I feel funny about that one um, because uh, again, Russian devs shouldn't necessarily be the ones that should take the hit for it, but they all it, they need to make an impact they really really do um to make people realize that this is not an okay situation um but we'll see we'll see how epic and certain games that are being developed in russia because there's a couple that are on the epic engine and things whether or not there will be some interesting fallout from that and maybe some games may get delayed heavily um or even cancelled in some regards um but yep Epic Games, that's a pretty fucking big one. Take Two, another huge one. This one's insane because this is Grand Theft Auto. This is the moneymaker in the industry. So Take Two um, is halting its sales in uh, Russia and Belarus. Um, very, 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 very big. Um, it, this is crazy. This is absolutely insane. Just certain things being cut down. Itch.io is releasing a bundle for uh, Ukraine, which has 990 games and items. I will definitely support this. If you guys want right now, the games in this bundle are good. There's some really, really good shit in here. Again, this is one of those things that it's really funny to have these situations where Humble Bundle and Itch.io both do these. I would heavily suggest picking up this one because these proceeds go to the charity that I think that is worth going towards. But also, the devs that have worked on these games, I think that you'll enjoy these games just in general. I, it's one of those things, it's not just doing it for that. You, It's the charities where you get both ways. You just win. It, you just win for being involved, essentially. Um, considering Russian dollar is worth less than Roblox right now. Yeah, oh my god. The downstream, uh, this is... Much of this is downstream of payment processing, whereas the knowledgeable exposure doesn't get any incentive to stick around, pretty much. So there is a funny thing here in, uh, in Formidable. Um, I don't know if I've got it in one of these articles. They actually talk about it how... I think it's the Twitch one. If I've got the Twitch one, it'll talk about it. But essentially, that there um, there are certain sanctions that it's where it's happening before it actually... So they're not getting money from those regions anyway, so they may as well cancel it out. So that's you have to be interested you have to read into it a little bit as well but um yeah oh here here it's this one sanctions prevent twitch from paying russian streamers so essentially different finance services that essentially you would get paid from so like paypal and all those sorts of things um i, I think there's a couple of russian specific ones that work tied to twitch basically meaning that they can't be paid out by twitch um, so similarly, that's why some of the funding between certain businesses being able to bring games into um, Russia was not working as well. So as well as uh, the restriction of bank access and things like that. So they're very, 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 very much being closed off from finances. Um, and uh, it's I, again, I feel sorry for the individuals that get impacted by this, but it's one of those things where it's 
it's it they need to be aware of why the world is upset and that perhaps they need to be getting involved and saying no it, they might be saying no for the wrong reason but they, it, they need to be it needs to be sort of prevented um I, again i don't want to get into too many politics around this but it's just being aware of that this is happening in the industry um because everyone's doing it. Nintendo delays Advance Wars remake indefinitely amid the Ukraine invasion. I think this is this is a kind of tasteful thing to see um, because I do feel like it's funny when you do certain games um, released at certain times. And if you don't know, one of the teams in um, Advance Wars, because they're, they're kind of based on real world ones, Team Blue is Russia um, and... Uh, they are a bad guy for a bit in the story. Um, so it's one of those things where you kind of, they kind of need to make sure they tip, they, they be careful around this stuff. And I think that's fine. I think that Advance Wars is like, people are, will pick up this remake when it comes out, essentially. It, being delayed isn't going to cause them much issue, I feel. Koei Tecmo makes charity donations to the Ukraine. I still, I still like these as well. I'm, I'm enjoying seeing these these charity donations from very notable companies, um, and some of them are quite sizable. Um, Koei Tecmo donated five hundred thousand to the United Nations High Commissioner, which is a lot, like a lot, a lot. Classic JP PR move. They tend to be very sensitive about this stuff. Yeah, I, they generally are. Um, uh, I think it, I think it's a wise move, honestly. I think it's 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 fine. Uh, again, Japan's probably one of the few places that still also kind of have weird referentials to real world and kind of can get away with it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Supercell and CI Games stop sales in uh, uh, Russia and Belarus. Um, so this is the Sniper Ghost Warrior games, which actually are very popular over in Russia. Um, again, more like shooter style games and things like that so it's it's i think these games also have russian reference as well um but yeah just i think whenever you see these ones where it's like they have associated is is also to be aware of as well ps 4s and ps5 games and systems so for like the actual systems themselves are no longer being sold in russia um so that means people aren't pin pinching your ps5s guys people aren't the the limited resource you aren't going to Russia now. But yes, this this is also big as well. This is Sony making a stand here, like a, a pretty direct stand. Um, so yeah, uh, very, 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 very big. Um, and this is the one that was tippo, tiptoed around by Nintendo because Nintendo seemingly was restricting access last week, but now it's straight up as stated, Nintendo is going to be suspending sales and shipments to Russia. Um, so it seems like Nintendo got sort of the comfortable because of other people, what other people were saying, um, that they were like, yep, we're, we'll just straight up, we're, we're not selling over there now. And good, good. More for the rest of us, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many that they would be selling over in Russia anyway, but yeah. And Humble Store doesn't actually do charity one this time yet, but they are actually suspending their games and sales over there as well. So Humble Bundle, um... It's just a just another another platform that they've lost access to. All right, and this all accumulates to leading leading to the last story of the day, which I kind of had a laugh about this, and um, we'll see how the fallout of this is. Russia has reportedly legalized piracy in the face of economic sanctions. It's not going to bring the hardware in, but it seems like all the restrictions, because by the way, it's not just, I've stated only about the game stuff. There is restrictions on physical product. There's on sort of finance services, on uh, website services, on um, just like, uh, like video services. All these things are being restricted down to Russia. Russia is not getting access to these things. And so the response in kind <laughs> is that piracy is to be legalized um, because their, uh, their economy is kind of going into the shitter um, and they might go into a, a recession here that may damage the country for times and times to come. Um, but yeah, 
legalized piracy. Time to VPN, boys. <laughs> Comrades, welcome in, including my and Carter. This is not going to end well for Russia. I think they underestimated. Again, I. the hard part is there are parts of Russia that are very almost isolated or separated from um, main the main areas of Russia that are very, uh, I would say, uh, under the thumb. And they basically operate as if they're not really like they're, they're as if they're in Ukraine or they're in those outer regions where it's like they do have a lot of freedom of will and stuff like that. However, it, those ones unfortunately will be impacted. And there's a reason why a lot of them have like fled the country and all that sort of stuff. Ukraine is not the only one leaving the areas and things like that, um, but it's it's one of those things where it's going to be a very interesting fallout from this um, and it'll be a very hard time for a lot of people uh, who live over there. Um, so again, war does not, it profiteers the hires, it does not profiteer the lowers. It is a horrible, horrible thing and um, it's, it's hopefully the people of Russia and Belarus that essentially have basically no involvement do come out of this in a way that isn't just destructive to their lifestyle um but at the end of the day this is something that needs to happen um and uh really just hoping for that this does not drag out i'm really praying that this is not a long-term thing Shades of games, shades of the games market in the shadow of the Berlin Wall. It's it's interesting. It's it's very weird to have these sort of like it's it's we haven't really had too many very big moments like this in the past few decades that you can see it sort of take impact from our modern ideologies, but this is what we're kind of seeing we're kind of seeing it fall the, the fallout coming out in this form and it's it's interesting to see not a good thing to see but it's interesting um but yeah let's hope that this does not go for much longer but this is pretty much i only wanted to do this week and last week i think i think we've probably seen the bulk of them now in terms of people getting on board with preventing restriction uh, preventing anything being transactions to the country um, but from now on, it'll just be, it, it probably will just be very, like, uh, it's real world stuff from here. Was a supporter of the gray market, I mean? Oh, I see what you mean. Got you. Right. That makes a little bit more sense. All right. And that's probably the last article. I know it's we ending on a pretty heavy one, but it's kind of still heavy times. Um, I, again, I don't, I feel like people are a bit in doom, doomsayer mode, um, about World War Three. You don't need to go to that far, but definitely be aware of things that are happening in the world and uh, compassion where it needs to be. So, um, all right, that's all the news for this week. Um, I am going to now take a quick break um, and uh, we will jump into Elden Ring. Um, that'll be the rest of today. And uh, I'm gonna go commit war crimes in uh, Elden Ring. No, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna go fight things. Gonna go fight things. Oops, I just bought 900 games. Oh my god, Red Rover, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. But yes, I, I should probably drop a link to that, um, to that one actually. So, um, itch.io. So if you've never been to itch.io, um, it is where indie games live. Um, I will take you guys. I'll get a link to the. Uh, where is it? Hang on, guys. I'm trying to find the bundle. By the way, there's lots of bundles. If you want bundles, there's usually bundles all the time. Um, oh, here we go. So if you guys want a link to the bundle, here is... I think it's this one. I just want to double check that this is the correct one. Um, 100 plus titles. This is the right one. I think it's this one. This is. I think this is the RPGs one. Oh, here's the bundle. This is the one I was looking for. Sorry, chat. Here we go. So if you want 
have a look at that. There is other bundles as well, um, like uh, TT TTRPG. Um, they they do bundles actually pretty often. But um, if you would like a series of games, like there are ones here that I like. I kind of I'm actually kind of shocked. Skatebird's in here. Um, I kind of want to play Skatebird as jank as it sounds like it might be. Um, there's a lot of horror here. Fucking super hot's in here. Um, the, uh, you, a lot of things you probably won't recognize. Bubba is you in here? Very good. Um, fit for a king's good. Um, oh my god, Celeste is in here. Minutes in here. Uh, Tower Falls in here. Jotun's in here. There's a lot, chat. Um, Ascension as well. Oh my god, Baldi's in here. Yeah, so there's some good games in here. So if you guys do want to, you can go pick up this bundle. But for now, I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to go get some uh, some food and stuff. 